power factor is a characteristic of mains AC which we need to take into consideration when we are talking of distribution and supply. Now, imagine this is the characteristic of an AC supply, right? You're supplying your three-phase power, whether it's distribution, transmission, or consumption, you're supplying a voltage of three-phase uh, value. So that voltage, let's say here on this axis is time, uh, but for time we usually use angle, and this is now the magnitude, let's call it the voltage, something like that. So this is the voltage as it changes over time. So starting at time zero, if the magnitude is zero, it will increase to a peak, let's call it V peak, and then increase to a minimum, let's call it negative V peak, and so on and so forth, all right? Likewise, your current would follow the same path. So let's say that is your current with its peak and negative peak. Now, note that in three phase, the voltage and the current are the two main characteristics of your supply. Everything else is derived from that. If it is power, you derive it from the voltage and current. If it is energy, you derive it from voltage, current, and time, and so on and so forth. Now, the voltage and the current will always have the same frequency. That is, each from the peak, from the zero to the peak, to the zero to the negative, all the way up to here, this wavelength will not change, right? Whether it is voltage or current, they will always have the same frequency. The, the time taken for it to reach maximum and minimum and back to zero will always remain the same. However, what can change is what we call the phase. This is a difference between the positioning of the voltage and the current. So what we do for uh, phase is that in some cases you might find that your current may lag behind the voltage. So your current may start at a, a, another, a different time from your um, voltage. Let me get it there, right? So if your voltage is at zero at this point in time, your current would be reaching zero at a different point in time. And that gap is given by phi, which we call the phase angle. In this case, we say that the current is lagging behind because by the time the voltage is at zero, the current has not yet reached there. And it, the current waveform has to go through a certain amount of time in order to reach the same uh, point. So if we take, for example, the peak, the peak for the voltage will be reached at time T1, T1. But the peak for the current in this case is reached at time T2, all right? That gap in between the two is what we are calling the phase angle. And this is created by what we call lagging loads, all right? Remember, when you apply a voltage, yeah, your, your voltage in the socket near you is just sitting there waiting to be consumed. The moment you connect a load to it, that is the time when current flows. But current does not start flowing until you have a load. And the nature of the load that you have is what determines the kind of current that will flow. So if you have a very inductive load, the current will lag, right? If, on the other hand, you have a very capacitive load, what will happen to your current is that it will actually lead. So let's say you have a capacitive load. This will become a leading current. So your current will actually lead. So now this type of current that we have here, uh, we now have current I, which is due to a capacitive load. So because of the nature of the capacitive load, the current that will come out is actually leading the voltage. It will, because of the nature of that particular uh, current, you will have a phase angle phi that is ahead or 
positive or leading this gap between the two so what you will notice in our example here we had said the time at which voltage reaches its peak is time t1 but the peak of your current has already taken place which is t0 okay the corresponding points in their various waveforms are separated by a phase and that is what we call the phase angle phi is the phase angle of the waveform all right now this is very important in that the phase angle will determine what you call the power factor of your application so let's look at it from a different point of view let's look at it from what we call a vector view vector is now whereby you look at the average magnitude of your various values as represented by the waveform here and you look at the phase angle between them so actually in electrical engineering we call them phasors this is the way of representing which you must have seen in uh, circuit theory you represent various uh, quantities so if we take our voltage to be a phasor or a vector with that magnitude and that direction in the case of an inductive circuit the current will lag behind by an angle phi okay this is your current in the case of in the case of a capacitive circuit it will lead by another angle phi let's call it phi 2 which is phi 1 now all this is to say that there are different uh, angles between each of the uh, characteristics and likewise the voltage and the current the same way that they have phase differences and phase angles you will also find that power in the same way also has phase differences and phase angles now this is where we now introduce another concept the reason why we have uh, the inductive and the capacitive loads changing the the characteristic of the current is that each load has a real component and a reactive component all right so the real components are purely resistances and the reactive components are capacitors and inductors the way in which these elements interact within a circuit is such that they have either a real component or a reactive component the difference between the two is that real power or real energy has the capability of actually doing work so what we consider as energy what we consider as real power is the real uh, components so if you take a look at for example a heating element all right a heating element is essentially a resistive wire that because of the flow of current it converts that electricity into heat it does the actual work that it is doing the actual energy that is converted is due to the resistance and this is another of those key concepts that uh, i'd like you to take away from this lecture or from this unit is the difference between real and reactive components real components will always be the actual energy that can be converted into another useful form so if it is electricity it can be converted into heat light uh, mechanical energy in the form of motors the real power is the power that will actually do work but the reactive power which is found from capacitors and inductors is still part of it it's still part of the energy that is or the power that is being transmitted okay it is a vital component of electricity but it cannot be converted into real work it cannot do work right it cannot run a motor it cannot heat a circuit okay now the way in which we represent these two is that if you have a real component it is usually represented along that axis and if you have a reactive component it is usually represented along that axis whereby these are the complex axes and the components themselves will be added to each other like complex numbers right 
so if your resistance is uh, say uh, 10 ohms here and your reactive we call it reactive impedance is 5 ohms here the resultant of the two when they are added together the resultant will be 10 ohms plus j 5 ohms right your real components are here your reactive components are there now what happens is if you look at this diagram it is similar to these diagrams that are here okay where you have a baseline which is taken as zero degrees the baseline is there and you have an angle phi which is the angle from zero that your component is different right so now in this particular case you would have your three types of elements you have your real your reactive and this one here is called apparent these types of configurations are available or are present in all characteristics or phenomena within electricity they are present in voltage they are present in current they are present in impedance impedance is resistance and capacitance and inductance and they are also present in power so this is where now it brings us back to the distribution system in the case of power you will have real power which is there you have an inductive power which is reactive and the combination of the two will be your apparent power so these are three different types of power and they are represented real power is usually apparent is by s real power is by p and reactive is represented by q and your phase angle phi is still present in all of those now let's look at the the power in regards to distribution so you have your three elements these two are at right angles with each other you have your real power which we have said this has the capacity to be converted and do real work so heating lighting and so on the only part of your system that can do actual power is your real power which is associated with resistance this part here the inductive power while it is not necessarily useful in doing work it is very useful in terms of electromagnetic operations so things like motors and generators they definitely require some reactive elements in order for them to work any motor or generator must have a reactive component to it okay real power is the real work reactive power comes from these electromagnetic operations so whether the generator when it was generating power or your motor when it is converting uh, you know your current when it is inducing your current within various other places all right now the two of them the resultant value is what you call apparent power so when you have power being distributed along your distribution system the power that the distribution system sees in quotes is the apparent power right it will see that you are travel you are transmitting power in a certain number of kva or mva or whatever it is and these are volt amperes so kva mva or va whatever you want to call it all right those are the units power because it is used to convert real work it is kilowatts or megawatts okay the real power is in kilowatts or megawatts and this q which we won't go into so much is called kva r reactive or mv a reactive right those are the three components within a distribution system or any ac system okay that has various loads now the problem that we have here is that whenever the distribution system sees power it is seeing the apparent power it is seeing the kvas and the mvas even when we talk of generators generators are rated in terms of mva the reason for that is as long as your device or your conductor or your transmission line has to carry power it must carry the real component and it must also carry the reactive component 
and the combination of the two is your apparent power measured in kva so because that is the case your your system from start to finish from generation to consumption must be able to carry the apparent power and it must be designed to be big enough to do that now here is where now the catch comes in if you can design your system in such a way or you can design your loads in such a way that you can have your system carrying the minimum possible apparent power you will be at an advantage because what you really want is your real power this other stuff the the reactive components are only internal to your power system your consumer doesn't need it okay they only need their real work they want their heating they want their lighting they want their tvs and so on they don't need this stuff that is internal to the system so if there was a way we could reduce it we would be able to be at an advantage now note that apparent power here is on the hypotenuse this is a right angle triangle so apparent power is the biggest of the two s squared is equal to p squared plus q squared because they are on a right angle right this p the real power is what you want to take out that's the real work that you want to convert we want to minimize this value of q all right so how do we you know put it in a way that it is easy to understand how well we are achieving that we bring in our phase angle phi now from your your right angle triangle let's uh, redraw it down here your right angle triangle s p and q with a phase angle of phi so s in this case is related to p and q through the phase angle there right and you will notice that p is equal to s cos phi simply because of what is the cosine of this the cosine is p or p over s okay the relationship between the two adjacent over hypotenuse so that means that we can be able to tell how well we are doing by how closely the s and the p are with each other if we can minimize the value of q it will be such that p will be very very close to s so your angle phi will be very very small this is s this is p yeah your real power what you want is taking up as much as possible of your apparent power so you want phi to be as small as possible okay and remember cos phi for a very small angle tends to what it tends to one cos of zero you can do it in your calculator will come to almost one so now this now brings us back to the title of the topic which was power factor so actually the elusive power factor that we are talking about is this thing cos phi is known as your power factor and all power generating and power distributing companies especially the power distributing companies will always want their power factor to be as near as possible to one or unity what we call unity and we will there are various methods that are used in order for us to bring this down as low as possible and there are factors that are taken into consideration and just to illustrate that we'll do a, a quick example so let's say your alternator uh, is supplying a load of 300 kilowatts and it is at a power factor of 0.6 lagging remember what we talked of lagging and leading how many more kilowatts can the alternator supply if the power factor is increased to one or unity okay so the question is right now we have a certain alternator that is supplying a 300 kilowatt load the power factor or the cos of phi the angle in between these two the cos phi is six okay so your load 300 kilowatts is p the power factor cos phi is 0 0.6 this is 300 kilowatt if we were to increase this to one yeah for the same value of s how much power could we get so what is the value of s so we've said p is equal to s cos phi therefore s is equal to 
P over cos phi, which is equal to 300 over 0 0.6, which is equal to 500 kVA, right? Note the change of units. This is kilovolt amperes, this is kilowatts. Kilowatts, remember, is real power. You will always be able to remember that because all your other mechanical machines in, in mechanical engineering, you have kilowatts as your measure of power. KVA is only in electrical. So that is apparent or reactive. So your apparent power that your alternator is supplying is 500 KVA. Remember what we said. Apparent power is what the system sees. Okay, it's only visible within the system. So the alternator here is generating 500 kVA. Now, if you had 500 kVA, what power would we be able to generate? 5 times 1. It means that our power would be 500 kilowatts. If your power factor changes to 1, remember here we started off with 0 0.6, we've now changed it to 1 your power that you'd be able to generate would be 500 kilowatts. That's an increase of 200. Yeah, Simply because you have been able to change your power from being having a poor power factor to having a good power factor, you can now see that the system can be able to carry much more real power than it would otherwise. And so what we call this is power factor correction. This is the process of changing your power factor from a low value to as close as possible to 1.